today we come to the end of our stewardship season. Or rather, today we come to the end of our worship series specifically focusing on stewardship. But if we define stewardship as the act of protecting something that is worth preserving, then stewardship is something we need to dedicate ourselves to not just for a season, but all year long for our whole lives. If something is worth preserving, then we should feel called to make sure that it is always protected, not just sometimes. This year we have an overarching theme of legacy, which is something that is passed down from one generation to another, a set of values more than just a physical object. We've been looking at five different passages of scripture, two from the Hebrew Bible, two from the Gospels, and today's from the letter of Paul. Each one is a way that we can reflect on legacy and stewardship. We began with Moses and the way he devoted his life to helping the Israelites reach the promised land, even though he knew that he himself would never reach it. We read about Ruth, who chose to devote herself to her mother-in-law, even in the midst of poverty, hunger, and grief. We read about the Samaritan woman at the well and how her response to meeting Jesus was to run and tell everyone. Last week, we read about a woman whom Jesus told us would be remembered for something she had done, and we wondered how we ourselves will be remembered. Throughout our worship series, we've been using a prayer of dedication about planting and building that was written by Ken Untener in the 1970s when he was the bishop of the Diocese of Saginaw, Michigan. It draws on imagery from today's reading and inspired some of the framing of our worship series, which was outlined by my colleague and Facebook friend, Carol Holbrook Prickett, who serves a Presbyterian church in Kentucky. So before I read our second scripture this morning, I wanted to repeat the closing lines of the prayer. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Amen. Our second reading this morning comes to us from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, the work of each builder will become visible, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each has done. If what has been built on the foundation survives, the builder will receive a reward. If the work is burned, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only as through fire. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Paul suggests that we are like builders, constructing something on top of the foundation that is Jesus Christ. If there are spaces that need to be cleared, I'm good at that. If there are walls, I can paint them. If there's furniture to be assembled, toss me the instructions and I'll get started. Are these the most helpful skills when it comes to constructing a building? Probably not, but I'd still do what I could. There are plumbers and there are electricians, but if they can't work together, there are going to be problems and they might be shocking. Thank you. (laughs) There have been times when I have moved couches, tables, the baptismal font, uh, the big cross that's currently in the lounge, even, I will have you know, the piano, all by myself. But there have also been times when someone else gave me a hand in moving any of these objects, and it's weird how the process went so much faster. Our church was founded in 1878, but the congregation didn't meet at this address. The original building burned down in 1951. I can't imagine what I would do if I were the pastor of a church that had just burned down. I mean, I'm pretty sure that there would be a lot of shouting and swear words, hopefully when I was by myself. But this congregation was able to see past the anger and grief and shouting that they must have felt, able to come together to make new plans and adapt as needed. They came together and they built this sanctuary where they were already worshiping just two years after the fire. And they didn't stop there. The congregation recognized a need to not only worship together, but also to learn together and to create opportunities for meetings and conversations. So they came together and picked up their tools again and added on to their building, creating our lounge, my study, and the front office. And they didn't stop there. The congregation recognized a need to not only worship and learn together, but also to celebrate and eat together. So they came together and picked up their tools again and tore down the original fellowship hall, creating the one that we have now. That was in the mid 1980s, incidentally, which means that almost everything in the church kitchen is older than I am. But that also means that this congregation took the time and care to pick appliances that would last for literal generations. This congregation wanted more than just, for example, a coffee maker. They wanted a legacy of people who would come after them and who would also deepen their relationships with each other while drinking coffee. And they didn't stop there. The congregation recognized a need to not only worship and learn and celebrate together, but also a need to teach their children about God and a need to have a space to remember and visit the saints who have gone before us. So they came together and picked up their tools again and added on to their building, creating our CE classroom, our chapel with its columbarium wall, and our columbarium garden. And they didn't stop there. The congregation recognized a need to not only worship and learn and celebrate and teach and grieve together, but also to reach out to their community together. So they came together and picked up their tools and formed relationships with other churches, with local schools, with Aiden Milan, with scout troops and mission clusters, with book clubs, with musicians, with families, with nonprofit groups, with pharmacies, with people who had been hurt by other churches, with artists, with firefighters, with students, with friends, with youth groups, with people new to the area, with neighbors, and with so many more. We read God's words in Isaiah. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. All peoples, plural, joining together separate groups of people who identify themselves by some background or interest or quality. All peoples, plural, because it would be hard to build a house of prayer if every person involved in its construction had exactly the same skills. All peoples, plural, 
because God looks at us and sees us for all that we are and loves us anyway and loves our differences and our dreams and our various ways of expressing our love. All peoples plural, because God made the earth and sea and sky and everything in between and everything that breathes with life and every person who has ever lived. All peoples plural, because when we come together with our differences of opinion and with our individual quirks and with our particular skills, we can get so much more done than any one people or any one person could do alone. And God didn't stop there. God loved us and spoke to us and guided us through the words of the prophets. God held us close and listened to us and offered back hope and grace. God gave us Jesus Christ, not once at birth, but twice at his resurrection and a third time when he will come again. And God didn't stop there. God continued to inspire us through the Holy Spirit and continues to inspire us still. God's house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, but that house is still being built and we are its builders. And God won't stop there. What needs do we recognize now in our world, in our nation, in our community, in our church, in our families of choice and origin, in our relationships, in ourselves? How can we come together and pick up the tools to address those needs? In the grand scheme of time, even in the 2000 year history of the church, People's Presbyterian Church has only existed for a short time. What is 140 some years when some churches have been standing for a thousand or more? And yet, People's Presbyterian Church has made a real impact on more lives than we could count because her congregation chose to keep their eyes open for the needs around them and were ready to pick up their tools to continue building not just our literal church structure, but everything that is our legacy. We are still building, you and me and all of us together. What should we build next? We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Amen.